Well, good morning. Thanks for being here. Um, before I recognize everyone, I want to recognize the local uh, EMS and health uh, agency directors who are here. Uh, thank you for being here as well. Uh, joining the governor and I up here um, are senior advisors and the chair of the governor's Maryland or Emergency Management Advisory Council, Clay Stamp. I'm right here. Ready, Clay. Oh, okay. Good. The tall guy. I have Glenn Fuston, Executive Director of the Governor's Office of Crime Control and Prevention. Also, Maryland Secretary of Health and Mental Hygiene, Dennis Schrader. Uh, Colonel Bill Palazzi, Superintendent of the Maryland State Police. Maryland Secretary of the Department of Human Resources, uh, Lorda Padilla. Uh, Russ Strickland of uh, Maryland Emergency Management, uh, Dr. Howard Half, uh, Department of Health and Mental Hygiene, Dr. Barbara Bazaron, Department of uh, uh, Health and Mental Hygiene, as well as Secretary Sam Abbott, uh, Department of Juvenile Services, and Dr. Sylvia Lawson from the Maryland Department of Education. You know, almost three years ago now, Governor Hogan and I have been de dedicated to finding real answers and solutions to the challenge of heroin and opioid crisis in our state. Uh, back at that time, during our campaign in 2014, that became the focus of a problem that we were hearing throughout the state, throughout all our travels. It didn't matter what county or small town or the large cities in our state Heroin was the topic that we heard repeatedly. And while few others were paying attention to this, this crisis, Governor Hogan has consistently shown decisiveness and leadership and action. Weeks after taking office, the governor created the Heroin and Opioid Emergency Task Force, wholly dedicated to this issue, which he asked me to lead. Our task force developed 33 comprehensive recommendations, and to this point, our administration has provided nearly $9 million towards implementing those recommendations. Prior to even issuing the recommendations, we issued an interim report with 10 administrative actions that could be immediately executed, along with additional discretionary funding to start addressing the crisis. And that included bringing on online more treatment beds. In addition to the budgetary action, we have strengthened the Maryland Good Samaritan Law. We trained individuals in overdose response program. Last year, we funded additional heroin coordinators throughout the state. And we also expanded Maryland's prescription drug monitoring program twice, as well as signing the Justice Reinvestment Act, which included a Maryland RICO statute to help bring down the drug trafficking networks in our state. Just a few weeks ago, the governor and I announced further legislative and budgetary action. And today, we're taking even further steps. The fact of the matter is that people all across Maryland, and across our country for that matter, are looking for answers when it comes to this heroin and opioid epidemic. Too many families know the devastation caused by this crisis, and the number of users are climbing. And as they climb exponentially every year, so does the death toll. Ultimately, this is about saving lives. That's the bottom line in this effort. And it will take all of us working together, collaborative, holistic approach to achieve that. At this time, I'd like to introduce the governor, Governor Hogan, to discuss the critical steps we are taking today as we continue this fight. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Rutherford, thank you. Uh, as he said, immediately after we took office, I appointed the Lieutenant Governor to head up our administration's effort uh, to combat the heroin and opioid crisis in Maryland, and he has shown tremendous leadership over the past two years, and I can't thank him enough for his tireless work and his dedication. Uh, as we continue to attempt to attack this problem from every direction, 
with everything we've got. Since day one, our administration has been committed to shining a spotlight on the heroin and opioid crisis. We've been trying to use every tool at our disposal to focus on this crisis and to bring a heightened level of awareness to this threat, which is tearing apart families, devastating communities, and killing more and more Marylanders every day. Uh, I signed a regional compact uh, with the governor of Virginia and the mayor of the District of Columbia. I got together with, I think, 43 other governors of both parties from all across the country uh, to sign a letter uh, to the federal government asking that they pay attention to this problem and pro provide funding. Um, we uh, brought in our congressional delegation from Washington, both of our senators and all eight congressmen, to talk about uh, the need for them to get involved at the federal level. And uh, I just spent four days with the National Governors Association, meeting with the president, the vice president, most of the cabinet and senior staff. And this was certainly one of the issues that we talked about and focused on. Um, the reality is that this threat has rapidly escalated uh, with the introduction of fentanyl, which is 100 times more powerful and is far more deadly. Heroin use has tripled nationwide in the past 12 months. There are now estimated to be 27 million heroin users across the country. Heroin and opioid-related deaths have doubled in the last year in our state. A few weeks ago, Lieutenant Governor and I announced our administration's 2017 Heroin Prevention, Treatment, and Enforcement Initiative, which was a multi-pronged strategy to tackle the evolving threat of heroin and opioid addiction. The initiative includes three important pieces of legislation, the Prescriber Limits Act of 2017, the Distribution of Opioids Resulting in Death Act, and the Overdose Prevention Act. We announced important budgetary actions, including an additional $4 million uh, in new funds for additional treatment beds. We've now doubled the number of treatment beds in the state. Uh, and last month, I issued an executive order to establish the Opioid Operational Command Center, or OCC. Uh, in order to facilitate greater collaboration between our state agencies, including our health and human services, education, and public safety entities. We tasked them with organizing and coordinating resources to local opioid intervention teams and with collecting and uh, collating data to support decisions on how we could save lives. As a result of the initial feedback and the initial work of this new Opioid Operational Command Center under the leadership of Glenn Fuston, uh, the director of the Governor's Office of Crime Control and Prevention, it became clear that in order to expedite the mobilization of our statewide response and to build on the momentum already underway, we needed greater flexibility to engage our local partners and to be able to activate emergency teams in jurisdictions across the state. We need to treat this crisis the exact same way that we would treat any other state emergency. In just a few moments from now, I will be signing an executive order declaring a state of emergency <coughs> in the response to the rapid escalation of the heroin and opioid crisis in our state. I will be delegating emergency powers to state and local emergency management officials. These expanded and accelerated powers will enable uh, emergency management personnel to fast track coordination among uh, state and local agencies and community organizations, including working with the private sector and nonprofits. With this continuing threat increasing at such an alarming rate, we must allow for rapid coordination with our state 
and local emergency teams. We must cut through the red tape so that we're empowering this important work being done in many of our state agencies and at the local level. We're also announcing an additional $50 million in new funding, uh, $10 million each year for the next five years to support our heroin prevention, treatment, and enforcement efforts. This funding will provide much needed flexibility to public health and safety professionals as we continue to combat this heroin and opioid crisis. Finally, uh, I'm also pleased today to announce that Clay Stamp, our right here behind me, uh, will lead this accelerated state and local coordinated emergency effort. Clay is the former executive director of this Maryland Emergency Management Agency. Uh, he helped guide our state through numerous crises, including the devastating storms and the riots in Baltimore, just to name a few. Uh, he's been an integral part of our efforts to protect Marylanders from potential threats and emergencies, and his proven experience with efficiently and effectively leading complex emergency uh, operations between state, local, and community-based groups uh, to respond to emergencies in real time will be invaluable in this critically important role to spearhead the response to this emergency crisis. Responding to this public health emergency is not just about getting crime under control or lowering recidivism. It's not just about helping people to help themselves, uh, about families healing and healing communities. Uh, this is actually about taking an all-hands-on-deck approach so that together we can save the lives of thousands of Marylanders. So as this crisis evolves, so must our response to it. And we cannot do it alone. It will take everyone from the federal, state, and local levels, as well as the private sector and community leaders, faith-based leaders, and even families working together to finally begin to turn the tide in this difficult fight. Thank you. And at this time, I'd like to turn it over to Clay Stamp uh, for some brief remarks. Thank you, Clay. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, everybody, for assembling today. Um, before I uh, read my prepared remarks to you, I, I would just like to say a couple things. One, I'm inspired to see the people in this room. I uh, have great faith in the people that are in this room today, emergency managers and people that work at the Maryland Emergency Management Agency. <clears throat> I've seen you work together, and I've seen you do great things. And I have no doubt that we coming together uh, under the direction of the governor, we will make a difference. Um, the other uh, light bulb moment for me was the other day, um, I was getting in my county car and the fire radio went off and alerted for a 28 year old overdose victim and the person died. And this, uh, this started to feel like routine to me because I was hearing it regularly. And it just struck me that we really have a problem here. And then the other weekend, I was with my grandson, 13-year-old grandson in seventh grade. And I said to him, I, I said, are there drugs in school? And he goes, yeah, Poppy. I said, really? He, I said, what kind of drugs? He goes, heroin. I said, really? I, he says, they carry it in their backpacks. I said, really? By this time, I'm, wow, you know, I'm kind of in shock, right? He goes, there's no PSAs. I'm like, what are PSAs? Oh, information. I was like, okay. So that really kind of drove, drove it for me that we, we have a lot to do. We have a lot to do. And that's the, that, I just wanted to share that human story. So again, I, I'd like to thank the governor. Um, as an emergency management professional, it gives me great honor to have been asked to lead such an important effort. You know, we get together uh, for hurricane, hurricane threats where we're going to have some wind and flooding and we pull out all the stops. And that's important. But we have people dying every day in this state right now. There's probably no more important endeavor that I've been involved in in my career in emergency management than what we're facing. 
We've just heard the number of people being affected across the nation in, in, in and here in Maryland because of this uh, opioid crisis, and it's alarming. In my assessment, it's clear to me that under the governor's leadership, and specifically the work of the lieutenant governor, uh, in his opiate task force, great work has been accomplished, operating under 33 policy recommendations provided to the governor. There are many very smart people working very hard to reduce the impact of this crisis uh, in Maryland. It's affecting individuals, families, and communities. There are public health, law enforcement, human service professionals, educators, as well as members of the service organizations and business communities working to address this crisis from a prevention, enforcement, and recovery perspective. It is because of the scale of this crisis and its devastating impact on individuals and families across Maryland that at this time all efforts be shifted into the management and coordination system designed to handle emergency situations regardless of the nature. Effective today, I will be initiating efforts in partnership with Mr. Russell Strickland, the Executive Director of the Maryland Emergency Management Agency, to begin fully utilizing the same emergency management system and tools that are used for any catastrophic emergency situation facing our state. This will include engaging local emer emergency managers across Maryland to facilitate local coordination with their communities. It is often said, and I, I, I believe, all emergencies begin local, are managed local, and they're resolved locally. So we as state agencies have to use all the power that we have, leverage the resources and in, of the enterprise of state government to drive them to the local level, to give them the, to, the, the, the tools to reach out and touch their communities and, and start turning the tide here. So we're going to be also rolling all actions into a management process known as nationally as a National Incident Management System. This will allow us to develop a common operating picture as well as to build on objectives and strategies with measures and timelines. All of this will drive out efficiency and most importantly make a difference in saving lives. It is important to note that unlike managing the response to a catastrophic natural or technological emergencies, epidemics such as the op opioid crisis take time and require a response by all Marylanders working diligently to reduce and ultimately prevent opioid addictions. Again, Governor Hogan, Lieutenant Governor Rutherford, it is my honor to serve next to the many dedicated and highly capable people who are working to eliminate the impact of this crisis uh, on the people of Maryland. And again, thank you, Governor.